So before I start this TED talk, I want to show you an impossible trick. First, I need a volunteer to write down a number, any number between 1 and 60. Anyone interested? Mm. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Sorry, any number. And then after you write the number, show your number to all the audience. Does everyone see the number? Yes. Yes? Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is to guess the number on that sheet. Something possible? Look at this graph. Did you find your number here? No. no? Next one? Yes. 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 Oh, my bad. No. 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 Yes. Yes. No. So I guess the number on that sheet, twenty two, right? <laughs> Thank you. Magic. Magic. But what if I tell you it's completely not magic? It is math. <laughs> math. It's a little bit different from the math we usually see, right? We don't usually perceive math as an entertaining thing like what I just showed you. Thousands and thousands of comments on YouTube prove that a decent percent of the population has a more or less negative hearing of math. And all those comments can lead to the final claim. Math is mental abuse to humans. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth, I was intrigued while looking into all those comments, so I read them over and summarized them. This is our brain. And I found that inside this brain, we do not actually have millions and millions of reasons to blame on math. We hate this subject only for three reasons. First, we think ourselves not smart enough to do math. We always give up so easily and conclude that I am not a math person. And the second reason we hate math is we hate math teachers. <laughs> Occasionally, we meet the bad teachers, and the way they deliver knowledge is repetitive or even misleading, so we lose all our interest through the learning process. And the last reason we hate math is because of math itself. Math is so complicated, tedious, and boring, and we cannot find anything fun on this subject. So, I'm sure that some of you may have those same feelings when doing math, right? But, why are we talking about them today if we cannot make a change? Now, I want to share three stories, and I hope they may possibly challenge your opinion. When I was nine years old, third grade, I was struggling on math. At school, we only learned adding and subtracting, but I already concluded that I'm not a math person. I'm just so bad dealing with the numbers. To improve my math, my mom sent me to an extra character math class every Saturday. Of course, I didn't want to go there, and obviously I didn't do a good job. <laughs> For the first three weeks, the only thing I was thinking in that class is how to get out of it. <laughs> Until I noticed a little guy sitting next to me. It took me just a second to solve 5 plus 12, but it took minutes for him. Suddenly, I was so glad that I was not the worst in that class. <laughs> there was someone more dumb than me. <laughs> And one day a teacher came in and drew some shapes on the board. A circle, a cross mark, and a star. She asked the class to draw those shapes in one stroke line without lifting the pencil. They are interesting, I thought. For the circle, I can start at any point and trace it one stroke. For the cross mark, I probably couldn't do it because after I draw one line, I had to lift my pencil to draw the other. Then. Looking at the star, I tried several times and finally found the one-stroke solution. I drew it on my paper, showed it to the teacher, and felt I was the smartest person in the world. Then, I felt even better when I looked at the kid sitting next to me. He was still staring at the star, having absolutely no idea how to draw it. He really sucks, right? <laughs> and in the next few classes, 
We were still talking about this one stroke problem, but the questions were getting harder and harder. There was a problem like this really confused me. After hundreds of tries, I felt I so did everyone else in class. But at that moment, the kid sitting next to me raised his hand and told the class there is a solution. He slowly walked to the board and wrote out those numbers next to each vertex. Q43, 464644, 342. When we were all wondering what that means, he explained the number next to each vertex is the number of lines it connects. Some of the numbers are odd, and others are even. He proves that that figure must have a solution if it has exact two odd numbers. I was shocked. All of the class, including the teacher, were shocked. Every one of us believed that this kid wasn't smart at all, but at the end of the day, he proved to us, and he proved to himself, that he is a math person, and everyone in the world can be a math person. The second story happened when I was in second semester of eighth grade. I had a really inspiring math teacher. Let's call him Bob. I love Bob. He taught math in a really creative way by playing games and looking into problems which are related to the outside world. However, Bob left that class in the beginning of next semester, and a new teacher came. Let's call him Joe. I didn't like Joe. He right away hated the game we used to play in the beginning of each class. Instead of teaching math creatively, he was always staring at his book, walking around the classroom, and reading the text from that book. I hated that class. I complained to my friend how I hated Joe and how I missed my Bob. <laughs> until, until, I suddenly realized one thing. Teachers and math are two separate things. Am I here learning math or learning the words and actions of this new teacher, Joe? We all came here to learn math, right? So in class, I began to take notes carefully on whatever Joe said, whether I understood them or not. After class, I reviewed those notes one by one and used my own way to interpret them. After I understood the concepts, I began to search some fun and interesting application by myself. In that few months, I became my own math teacher. After school in my room, I kind of designed my own math class. The way I learn math is free, interesting, and unique. So on the journey of learning math, we'll meet teachers we love we totally agree with such a spot. But always, we have to work with the teachers we do not prefer, the Joes. So if unfortunately you meet this Joe, why not simply ignore him? Why not try to be your own math teacher? Now, I have my last story. Forget about everything I said today and imagine you are a spy. Ten minutes ago, you secretly entered the room and your mission is to use your hands to signal the commander the number of enemies in this room. Being trained in spy school, you are not allowed to show the digits one by one. So, how do you use those ten fingers to gesture the number of people in this room? Suppose we have five people in this room. We can use a single hand to gesture number five, right? But what if there are a hundred, two hundred, or even a thousand people in this room? It's something possible if you count them with ten fingers, right? Now, the spy has to do math. What he'll do is to give each finger a number. T to the power of zero, which equals to one. T to the power of one, T to the power of two, T to the power of three, T to the power of four, and then switch hand. T to the power of 5, T to the power of 6, T to the power of 7, T to the power of 8, and finally T to the power of 9, which equals to 512. Believe it or not, with those 10 numbers, the spy can represent any numbers from 1 all the way to 1023. Let's say there are 25 people in this room. The spy can raise those three fingers T to the power of 0, T to the power of 3, T to the power of 4. Add them up, 25. And what if there are 600 people in this room? The spy will rose, rose those four fingers. T to the power of 3, T to the power of 4, T to the power of 6, and T to the power of 9. Add them up, it's 600. And 
you guys still have the number you chose at the beginning of the talk. What's that number? 22. How do you gesture that number? And think about it. Can we relate those two problems together? So those are my three stories. I want to say math is not mental abuse to humans. <laughs> it is a sense of accomplishment of using math to reveal the magic trick I play. It is the pride of seeing that I do not need any teacher's help because I am my own math teacher. It is the joy of slapping on everyone's face and claim I am a math person. In the end, I want to go back to our brains. Inside this brain, rather calling them three reasons we hate math, I would say those are the three little challenges on the way we learn math. I believe all of you guys here, all of you listening to this talk, will overcome those little challenges step by step. Thank you.